more I play with bismuth, the more it becomes one of my favorite elements. Previously I created a video about how it can be used to make beautiful metallic crystalline formations thanks to its low melting temperature and colorful oxidation states. For this video, I'll be taking advantage of one of bismuth's other properties, which is being exceedingly diamagnetic. Materials that are diamagnetic produce their own magnetic field in opposition of any field that's applied externally. It sounds pretty technical, and it is, but for practical purposes, you can think of bismuth as reacting to a magnet in the opposite way that iron does. Rather than being attracted to magnets, bismuth pushes them away. By taking advantage of this diamagnetic property, we can use bismuth to create a stable pocket of opposing magnetic forces, where a small magnet will be perfectly suspended in mid-air, indefinitely levitating with no energy consumption. If you've ever tried, you know it's impossible to find the precise point where one magnet will float in mid-air below another. No matter how careful you are, it will always either fall to the ground or fly upwards and smash into the other magnet. A diamagnetic levitator, like the one I'll be building in this video, uses the repulsive diamagnetic forces produced by bismuth to counteract the exponential nature of the magnetic field from the magnet above. Rather than getting much stronger as we get closer and much weaker as we get further away, the bismuth intervenes on both sides of the balance point, preventing our levitating magnet from moving too far off-center. Alright, that's enough theory. Let's get started. I had a prototype design in my head as I began this project, and it started with melting down some of my old bismuth scraps from my last video to cast into ingots in a small ceramic dish. I preheated the ceramic so it wouldn't crack when the high temperature metal was poured in. This is dangerous. I don't recommend casting metals in this way for yourself. With the ingots made, I moved on to building the frame for my prototype, constructed from wood planks and threaded rod which will allow it to be adjustable as I figure out the proper spacing for all the components. A center mark was made on each of the planks just so I could visualize it for the moment, and marks were also made to indicate where to drill the corner holes for the supports. I taped all three planks together before drilling so the holes were sure to be aligned. One of the three planks also gets a hole drilled through the center. This will be the top of the device, and the center hole will be for an adjustment bolt that holds the lifter magnet. My ingots are now attached to the two other boards that don't have a hole through the center. I got the job done with some epoxy. The threaded rods bring the assembly together with nuts and washers holding each level in place. The two bismuth ingots face each other in the center, with the top plank made to hold the lifter magnet placed above. A bolt goes through the center hole with a nut that can be tightened to raise the head or loosened to lower it. When a magnet is placed on the underside, this should allow me to get really fine adjustments for the lift. The levitator is fully assembled, now I just have to get it dialed in. I have a variety of magnets to try, as I wasn't sure what would work best. All very strong neodymium magnets of various sizes. The combination I found to work best was my largest 1 inch magnet paired with a smaller 1 8 inch cube magnet. From here, what took the most time was to determine the best spacing for the bismuth plates to obtain stable levitation. If they're too far apart, it almost looks like it's going to work, but the magnet eventually collapses to one side or the other. It took some trial and error, but eventually I did figure out the proper adjustments, and it works really well. Left undisturbed, the magnet would float for more than 100 years before it would need readjustment to compensate for magnetic losses. Not bad. So now that I know how to make this work, I'd really like to turn it into a more attractive design. I started by remelting my ingots, this time outside since they still have some epoxy on them and I wasn't sure how bad the vapors would be. It didn't end up being a big deal as the epoxy just floated to the surface once the bismuth had melted, and I just skimmed it off with the rest of the slag. I'm pouring the bismuth into an aluminum tin that seemed like it would have approximately the right shape to form plates for the design I'm imagining. After allowing this to cool for a while and pouring out the center, the crystal formation was not as good as I hoped. I think it cooled too quickly and from the bottom up. I'll try this again, this time slowing the cooling process with some fiberglass rope below the mold. 
The formation was better this time, and I almost decided to use it. The last minute, I decided to try using the melting pot itself as a mold, putting it on a bit of an angle to cool, insulated from the sides with my fiberglass. Now this looks like it produced some nice crystals, but we'll have to cut it open to find out. With some sanding, I was able to create flat surfaces to act as plates in the levitator, while retaining really nice crystals. This should work. So here are the components for my final model. I have a wood base to which I've attached the lower diamagnetic plate. I realized with my prototype that the lower plate doesn't have to be adjustable. All the fine tuning can be done by moving the top plate and the lifter magnet. A 1 inch diameter copper pipe goes into the base as a pillar. The top plate I've glued to a piece of wood with a hole made for the pillar on the far end. The weight of the bismuth causes the board to bind so it won't fall if I don't touch it, but it can easily adjust when needed. The lifter magnet is held with a similar board, but to this one I've glued a piece of sheet metal so the magnet can be repositioned anywhere along the surface, and potentially exchanged for any other combination of magnets I'd like to try. That's the entire design. Extremely simple, and it works perfectly. In researching this project, I gained inspiration from a lot of other people's work, so there will be some links in the video description to some of my sources that you should definitely check out if you find this subject interesting. As always, you can check out all of my own projects on my YouTube channel, Nighthawk in Light. Be sure to leave me a comment. Reading them is my favorite part of releasing a new video. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, consider supporting my channel on Patreon. There will be links in the video description for that, and it would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you next time.